So let's take a moment and talk a little bit about how we can specifically use the measure of center of the mean and the measure of spread of the standard deviation and talk about a specific distribution that pops up a lot. So we are going to spend a lot of time this semester talking about the normal distribution. Okay, so this distribution, sometimes called like a bell curve, uh, sometimes called a Gaussian distribution, uh, it's got a bunch of different names, but ultimately it is a distribution that has this basic shape to it. So it's going to look like uh, more or less kind of a bell or this hill kind of thing. Okay, and, and for this this lecture, we're just going to kind of introduce some of the concepts on it. This is not everything that's true about the normal distribution or all the things that we can utilize about it, but we're just going to talk just a little bit about, uh, about the mean and the standard deviation and something new that's called a z-score uh, with respect to our normal distribution. Okay, so the nice thing about the normal distribution is that it is symmetrical, which means about this line, if we were to fold it, like doing a piece of paper or something, that each side would match up with each other perfectly. So it's symmetrical, and because it's symmetrical, that means that data that follows this pattern, the mean and the median, are both right there, which is kind of handy. Um, because sometimes when we have some distribution, sometimes the mean's better, sometimes the median's better. And this one, it's nice. They're the exact same point. Okay, so we've got the mean and the median. And a normal distribution is defined by where the mean is, because we've got to know where the center of the hump is, but also by the measure of spread of the standard deviation. Okay, so handy thing when you're drawing a quick normal distribution. This, the distance from the mean to where one standard deviation is is exactly where the inflection point is. Now if you remember from geometry, inflection point is when a curve changes from concave up to concave down. So here we go, we've got concave down here, and we've got concave up here, and since it's symmetric, it's at the exact same distance either side of the mean. So if we kind of go from the mean out to the inflection point and down, this distance right here is equal to one standard deviation. And I'm just going to simplify that by just saying standard deviation like that. Okay, so that is basically how a normal distribution is, uh, is defined. Uh, and so no matter what your mean is or what your standard deviation, let's say you had a mean of 50, we could put the number 50 in here, and had a standard deviation of, I don't know, seven, we could put the number seven there. And then this, that distribution would represent that specific scenario. Uh, we could also change the mean and the standard deviation, but the basic picture always looks like that. One standard deviation is from where the mean is straight across to where the inflection point is, and that's one standard deviation. Okay, so now let's say that we are looking at a specific measurement. Okay, so let's say that the mean, let's say that the mean equals, we'll put 50, and we'll have the standard deviation equaling 5. And then let's say that uh, we have, you know, some event uh, where we all of a sudden got the number uh, 60. So our observation is equal to 60. Okay, the question becomes now is how many standard deviations away from the mean are we? Okay, so we could see that from 50, and 55 would then be one standard deviation, and if we go another standard deviation, the same distance up again, let's go ahead and label these. So this would be mean is 50, Standard deviation is 5, so this would be then 55, and this would be 60. So how many standard deviations away from the mean are we? We are two standard deviations away from the mean. Now, this has a specific name for it and an equation that goes with it. Let's take a look at it real quick. So our, our equation for number of standard deviations away from the mean 
Uh, well, we can do this very simply as saying, uh, we can do exactly what we did. What we did is we took our observation, which was 60, and we subtracted it from the mean that we had, which was 50, and we divided by the total number of standard deviations that we had. We counted how many standard deviations? Five. And that's just going to be equal 10 divided by 5, and that equals 2. So the number of standard deviations away from the mean that we are is 2. This has a specific name. We've given actually this concept a number or a variable, and it's called a z score. So what you have is z equals x. That's your observation that we made, this specific observation, minus mu, minus the mean of our normal distribution, divided by sigma. And sigma is the standard deviation. So I'm just going to put up here some extra little variables. And we'll put mu here. OK, so the z-score not only tells us how many standard deviations away from the mean, but check it out. It will also give us the direction. So let's say we had another measurement. Let's say then that we'll have this be x1. And we'll have a new measurement. We'll say x2 equals 45. And we want to know the z-score. OK, we can plug that in. Let's try it. So here we've got 45 minus 50 divided by 5. That's going to be equal to negative 5 divided by 5, or it has a z-score of this time of negative 1. So this z-score equation not only tells us how many standard deviations away from the mean we are, but it also tells us which direction, negative being that we had an observation that was less than the mean, and positive being an observation that we have that is greater than the mean. And we will go into a lot more detail with this later on in class, but as an introduction, uh, this is how we can kind of use the mean and the standard deviation. And we can talk about how many, uh, so mean and standard deviation with respect to the normal distribution. And when we have an observation, we can talk about how many standard deviations away from the mean our observation is. The further away from the mean our observation, the stranger of a result it is. The closer to the mean it is, the more common of a result we have.